It's such a good day to be black and on the beach and have names like Honda Accord. You know what I'm saying? What the hell was this? back to my channel it's tyra here with another struggle review here to discuss old available right now in theaters now this is an m night Shyamalan movie just saying his name says a whole lot you never know what you're going to get going into the movies you could either have a really really good experience or you could have the experience i had last night before i get into what I really liked about this movie and some things that just didn't work that took me out of this movie, I need you guys to drop down and subscribe to my channel and like this video. I'm gonna give you guys a moment to do that and then we're gonna come back and discuss all things, the problems with old. So many problems, so many countless problems. subscribe to see more of me let's get into this movie now I will not be doing a scene for scene breakdown these are just you know the problems that I saw with this film like you never know what you're going to get with a director like this I was really excited to watch this film going in because the trailer as they always do with an M. Night film it always looks really interesting as it is you just don't know what you're getting into you could get things like a sixth sense split unbreakable really good stories that still it's still an M. Night Shyamalan story you know he loves a good twist loves to keep you guessing you're never going to get something conventional with him so you go in expecting that but in those story he still manages to have a really good balance of himself as a director and a storyteller but at the same time at the same time still keep you really intrigued and interested in the story and everything makes sense and everything is told well and then on the other hand we could get things like the happening and things like this movie old which i feel was you know somewhere in the middle of all of that and it's definitely not one of his better films now getting into the story this movie started off really really strong for me i really was here for the dynamics of the family you know everything not being as it appeared you know at first we think it's a happy family going on vacation and not soon after the, after that we realized no they're going through a divorce this is kind of their last hurrah for the kids before they tell them you know about the separation up until you know they're brought to the beach and we get into the mishaps that's going on there with their family as well as the other families who are trapped on the beach also now, once we leave that, we get into so many problematic things that did not have to be there because the premise of just getting old and, you know, them having, you know, to be on a time crunch and there were so many directions to go, but it seems like that we relied on, you know, just the premise of being old to carry us through a two hour movie. Now, once we learned the entire premise of this movie was to, you know, gather everyone on this beach under false pretenses, you know, this sweepstakes, get everyone to this result when actually one of these people to two in these relationships have some type of illness and they want to study them. And they can do that because the time goes so fast on that beach and they age so quickly that, you know, if we gave them this herb or this elixir that, you know, was a cure to something like epilepsy or dementia, we, you know, we know what that is now versus us having to naturally wait for these things to progress 10 to 20 to 50 years down the line. We can just study and watch them on this beach cool now even though for the most part i am really invested in the story i couldn't find any room to get invested in the characters and that's all the way from our leads to you know our side parts here i just did not get into anybody and i don't think that it was the actor's fault i think this is a test to his writing like oh my goodness talk about awkward talk about unnatural talk about what's written on the paper like this is some of the most wooden, unnatural dialogue that I have ever seen in a very long time, especially for a movie on such a big scale. 
it was almost like he forgot, you know, what to write or really give these characters any real dialogue to say and really flesh them all out. Every character here is an extension of their occupation. So you have each character repeatedly going over, you know, I'm a psychiatrist, I'm a nurse, I'm a doctor and repeating their names. And it's just, it absolutely takes us nowhere and doesn't push the story anywhere. And you find yourself stuck and not giving a damn about anybody on this beach. Now getting into the husband and wife characters that we're following throughout the whole film, the exchanges between them as you know, soon to be ex-husband and wife and how they're interacting with their children is some of the weirdest shit that I've seen in a long time. I really don't know what he was hitting at or why he was trying to be so poignant as to, you know, have such awkward dialogue between a husband and wife. And I think he was trying to convey that, you know, they were drifting apart and they didn't really, you know, care for each other anymore. They weren't sharing the same interest. And there's so much talk of, you know, focusing on the past and the future and so many arguments. But it was, it, it didn't help. It didn't give us anything. Now, one thing that this film did do well was really give us a great concept of time. It was trying to push the narrative of, you know, us taking time for granted as people. You never know, you know, when your next day could be your last day you know enjoy the people the things in your life your children your family while you can and in a blink of an eye like it could all be gone and the small things that matter now will be a fraction of you know what really matters on in when you're know up in old age and it was very good at pushing what time really means beyond that absolutely nothing here worked for me let's get into the characters now now, before everybody actually makes it to the beach, we are introduced to our really one main uh, male black character here who is trapped on the beach also. And, you know, he's there with the lady. And as soon as the families arrive, we have another couple there, courtesy of an older man, younger woman, whole thing. He's a doctor. He's there with his mother. And he is instantly suspicious of this black man. And the way that he is written and presented here, it's like he's written to appear to be suspicious for no damn reason at all other than he's black and it's supposed to be put in our face that you know you're gonna assume that i'm one way anyway so let me be stand offish let me not say much let me be mysterious let me take off running like a criminal for no damn reason like it was i have no words for it like it was very uncomfortable i didn't understand the concept of why he would be depicted that way but even getting into his name and him not at all, because most of them weren't, but he's not even a fleshed out character enough to have an actual real life name. His name is, you know, his celebrity rap name, Midsize Sedan, because you know, that's the thing. Um, <laughs> but you instantly get into this tension with him and this, you know, older man who's a doctor, who's instantly suspicious of him for no goddamn reason other than he's black as soon as they arrive on the fucking beach. Um, and the way that he's written, nothing happens to help that. It's just very like, oh, I'm black. And there's, you know, a couple of like black jokes thrown in there. The, um, older guy is clearly, even with his illness, and we're going to, we're going to get to those fucking suspicious for no reason and really racist. And I just, I didn't understand that. So later on, when we don't really flesh, flesh him out and, you know, we're made to understand that, you know, he had MS and this whole blood clotting problem. And it's just nothing there. He's there with absolutely no substance. And he's instantly, like, brutally killed off for no, like, the way that he was just attacked and killed off in the way that he was just attacked initially and cut and kind of used as, you know, a plot device to go, oh my God, look how quickly he's healing. There's more going on on this beach than, you know, that meets the eye, something's happening. But the way that he was just used to kind of drag through the mud and push the plot along and he was being attacked and nobody really gave a damn and it was just happening. And then he's brutally killed. Wow. Like you already have the narrative of him being, you know, accused of killing a woman that was dead when they got there who just washed up on shore just because he's black. And then you write him to be a mysterious, strong, bulky black man that, oh, uh, uh, get this shit out of my face. 
Now, once we get into our, you know, racist character and, you know, his young, pretty, thin, blonde wife and, you know, his uh, mother and his daughter on this beach as well. When we get into, you know, his illness, which I believe is dementia, I'm not sure. Please comment below if you know exactly what it is. But I felt like watching it that he had, you know, early onset dementia. And, you know, later we got into what was going on with that. But the both of them, the entire movie was giving me so much white privilege, especially the husband. Like, even with his dementia and everyone kind of acting you know defenseless against what he had going on the way that he was able to free range and run amok with the knife as he pleased cutting away at people being very accusatory and just you know under the stance you know that i'm a doctor but still be hair held to you know some kind of standard just because he was a doctor there now we are trapped on this beach they can't get off every time they try to go you know their hair starts ringing and they black out and you know there's a barrier keeping them in there but the way that he was just able to have free range to do and say and be however the fuck he wanted to be. Now, this is under the grounds of, you know, he has dementia. He don't know what's real. You know, we hear, you know, a lot of talk of movies and him just being completely out of it. In fact, it's really used uh, a lot for a lot of um, comedy within the movie, you know, to give. There was some comedy in this movie, you know, oh, like, oh, I bet, you know, this is, you know, one of the times that they wish that they were black. Like, it was so much of that. But to see how accusatory and kind of standoffish everyone was as far as our uh, lead uh, male black character was concerned and how he was attacked and everybody just stood around. But when you see this doctor, because I'm a doctor, you see him fucking lose his shit and you see that he's not all there and they wait all the way up until he actually kills someone to, you know, like, oh, he needs to be reined in. When you know if it was another character, it would have been like instantaneous, like, oh, no, hell no, this needs to stop. That whole thing there, that just, it, I didn't like that. Now, this character is used to be, you know, kind of villain-esque on the island to have, you know, that another layer of danger outside of you know just the premise of them actually being trapped on the beach and everybody aging at such a rapid pace that you know before the sun is up we could all be dead that was enough there i don't think we needed that and how it was presented here it was just a little tasteless to me i didn't like it and then when we get into his wife character and her aging and it kind of chipping away at her beauty and she's losing it you know to you know the point that she looks a little decrepit she has you know that miserable hump you hear you know talks of you know her having a calcium deficiency and things like that and we get into kind of her arc it was it didn't do anything for me or do anything for the story except add on to the already terrible special effects and cgi that was going on in this movie lord like we really took the time to CGI some blood coming out of someone's nose. Like, I don't know where the budget was for this. I really don't care to because it was M. Night Shyamalan. I know y'all gave you some coins for this movie. Um, Once we get into a character like um our, you know, blonde lady and as soon as you know she's breaking things and it's she's aging and healing at such a rate that wherever it breaks she's stuck until she's like a twisted ball of nothing and twitching some of the worst cgi i've seen in a long time and apart from the cgi this is a movie about old age and getting old. So I'm expect expecting the progression of, you know, how characters look when they get old to really be on point. No. For the latter part of this film, we have, you know, of course, the children, which was, you know, the main vocal point to show us, you know, how much aging was happening. Because we see them clearly go from really small, little six, uh, eight, nine, whatever year old children up until, you know, they're going through their teens, you know, 20s and 30s in the span, you know, of a couple of hours and up until, you know, their age, the same age that their parents would be. That was more so, you know, on point with the age and, you know, switching out the actors. And I think that's what made it work so well. But when we get into the parents there and how they try to present to us 
why they were an agent at such a rapid pace and why it wasn't being shown. I was not buying it. A lot of the times with where they were supposed to be aged, I was confused because they looked exactly the fucking same. Where was the old in the old movie? Who was old? When, when, when did they get old? Like, I was literally sitting, waiting and tweaking and looking at stuff because it's like, oh, okay, well, in an hour or so, like, we're losing, you know, upwards of, you know, three years and all of this, five years of our lives. Like, okay, where is it? I wanted to see it. Um, them adding, you know, a little crow's feet here or, you know, making this sink in a bit. Like, it just didn't do what I needed to do. So when we get into, you know, our characters, like our crazed racist man having, you know, really strong dementia or, um, you know, the pretty girl just, you know, forming the hump and all of that. And mostly with our lead couple that we're supposed to be following, I had a very difficult time trying to figure out exactly how old they were because it just wasn't displayed well here. And once we actually got to, you know, them being old enough to pass from old age and I didn't know how old they were. I am so glad we had those dynamics of, you know, really strong points of the movie. Like when we have the mom, you know, hold her ear and realize she's losing her hearing or we have the dad, you know, realize that, you know, he can't see and he's, you know, kind of, going blind like those points were good and it hammered home what I needed to know because if it wasn't there depending on the makeup here and the effects I wouldn't know how old they were because nobody looked fucking old now getting into more problematic things the way that the children are presented here um uh <laughs> the children we are introduced to you know age at a rapid pace to you know we see them as adult and the dollar is you know really voluptuous and developed and we see you know butt and hips and the once you know little six-year-old boy now has a chest and you know facial hair and you deal with the not even before we jump there everything here with everybody being so fucking calm was so problematic to me where you have, you know, people changing, people popping up dead, people doing their best to get off of this island, swim here, walk here, climb here, people dying left and right. And you continue to have people be so calm. There was not like any moments of, you know, just frantic disbelief and panic. And I ain't understand that. Like, what? I just seen my six-year-old turn into a uh, 14 year old boy where's the panic okay whatever and you know you constantly have you know the parents shooing the kids away and sending them off and you know just why okay but outside of that no matter what was you know the narrative in the story as to go you know with their development and age someone please drop down in the comments and tell me about the food and did the food really serve any purpose did the food do anything to the kids because i was lost on that mark but once we get into even the relationship, you know, with our black character there and our newly womanly little girl and their dynamic kind of seemed awkward to me and they're walking on the beach alone and it's, you know, I'm seeing colors and I'm so different and you have, you know, this, them have like a moment. I don't understand what the hell that was because in my mind, this is still a 10, 11 year old little girl. I don't care how, how much she aged. And then we get into the, the, the six-year-olds, the little girl and the son. Why? Why were we going to go through them having sex, because they did, <laughs> and her have a baby and lose it? Now, I was following the story and I was willing to intake that if it was going to add something to the plot. In my mind... We we're going to go through those notions, tasteless at best, but we we're going to go through those to have another person that's really young on the island who's going to age, you know, just as rapidly and just have, you know, someone there essential to the plot who, you know, might just get off the island as well and deal with the dynamics of, you know, just another life popping up. Like, what, what is he going to be like? Because, you know, the development for these six-year-olds was just out of this world. What's going to happen with this baby? The baby just dies. It added absolutely nothing to the plot. It just happened. And I think it was supposed to be used to kind of mature the children. But we have 
mentally six-year-olds who have, you know, progressed to where they're teenagers at this point, but still, you know, six-year-olds and, you know, still playing treehouse and playing house, you know, within a tent-like structure, but they get the concept of sex and where things go. Enough to, you know, in pregnant. You have, you know, the parents, you had sex and she's pregnant and you can't do that. And it seemed like, M. Knight didn't know what he wanted these kids to be because we have moments of, you know, such, you know, all this enlightenment and they're, you know, so mature, but only for the plot. And when the plot needed it, they had to remind us, oh, these are still six year old children. This is, this is still, you know, a young girl. They're still scared. Mommy, I'm scared. And da, 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 da. we didn't know the line between mommy, I'm scared and I'm a new woman. Like what the hell was going on here? And why did that need to be there? We didn't need to go through the whole pregnancy thing and even have the idea of these six-year-olds having sex and getting pregnant and losing it. He could have completely scrapped that and it wouldn't have made a difference in this film. It absolutely did nothing. It was just there, as was a lot of things. So I did not get that. Get it out of my face. This movie as a whole would have been really, really good as, you know, an episode. Uh, you know, one hour TV situation, Twilight Zone, Tell Us From The Crypt S situation. This would have been good there. Here as a full length two hour movie, no. There wasn't two hours worth of dialogue here. People constantly repeating about their occupation and you know, I'm a therapist, we should talk about this. And, you know, I'm a nurse and I'm a doctor, I know what I'm doing and us having, you know, really good moments like, uh, you know, with the tumor and them removing it and them having to work quickly before, you know, the scar heals up so quickly due to old age. Like those little things there were okay, but they were far few and in between. We have literally a looping of things occurring just because they're aging and people dying and there is nothing else going on here. You have aging and oh my God, you're old. Oh my God, oh my God, look at your face. Oh my God, look at your wrinkles. Oh my God, our children are so much older. Oh my God, oh my God. That's all that's going on here. There's nothing else happening here. Outside of that, you have people, and I mean people, AKA everybody, dying. That's it it just gets so tiresome and it gets boring because it's like where are we going With all of those things that we're supposed to be grasping onto it offered absolutely nothing them you know kind of rebuilding their relationship was probably one of the best elements in the movie and them getting you know so much into their old age and just really realizing what we were fighting about and what we wanted a divorce for is really trivial. It doesn't matter. I'm just here, happy to be with you right now in this time. And you know, them kind of wasting away together and being fulfilled with that up until the point they don't even remember what they were fighting about. That, that, was, that was touching. Everything else, there is nothing here in this movie. There is nothing. This is a hollow, empty ass movie. So getting into the ending and our grand, you know, per usual M. Night Shyamalan twist, I really wish he would stop acting in his own damn movies. Get your ass out of here. But <laughs> once we get into that and you really get into, okay, they weren't just, you know, trapped on this beach by some psychos. This is for medical research. And it's supposed to be kind of opening the conversation of, I think, you know, people being used as test subjects and you know how we treat people who are you know mentally incapacitated and you know the dementia talk the epilepsy talk and it's like you know what are we willing to do you know sacrifice you know the greater good you know for the whole and this research is going to save many and you know we may have lost you know 15 whatever people during this experiment these past couple of weeks but we're going to help millions of people like what we're doing justifies and you have you know all this clapping and this medical research it's just like yay and it didn't do anything for me i did not care i actually didn't even care that our you know two children who were left actually made it off the beach and they survived and you know they're at this point 50. uh i didn't care i did not care it did nothing this movie took a really great con concept that could have been really good, but instead gave us horrible pacing, the same stale dialogue too many goddamn times, 
all these stereotypes happening, stale ass humor, horrible acting, just a bad movie overall. Now, this is not his worst movie by far. This is not his worst, but a damn sure it ain't the best. This is somewhere in between Split and The Happening. It's right there. So if you fucking with right there, go watch the movie. Well, you guys, that was my review for Old. This movie got old really fast. This is not something that I would go back to rewatch. I did, which is, you know, a testament to a lot of his films. I just wanted to rewatch just to make sure the dots that I was connecting in my head was connecting with the film. But, you know, it's not even worth that. Like, this is something that I would have watched at home in my bed. I wouldn't, knowing what I know now, I wouldn't pay to see this. No. But, you know, you guys drop down and tell me what you thought about the film if you have seen it. Please, if you connected any dots that I didn't connect here, please drop down and help help me out. You know, I, 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 I ain't got to know everything. Drop down and put that in there. Because this movie left me feeling really empty and cheated for what started off well and had a really interesting plot that it just threw out the window just to put us on a stupid ass loop. But I see you guys next time for my next video. Bye.